Hey everybody, welcome to the vlog. How universal basic income will come to pass without an inflation of the currency? This is a question that was put to me by somebody on the YouTubes. Then he proceeded to insult me. Steph, you should stick to tech because you know nothing about economics. I remember in college, I took macroeconomics and microeconomics. And I remember my professors both said, yeah, all this stuff for learning, all these calculations, none of it actually works, none of it predicts with any accuracy. So then I would ask myself, why the hell are we learning this stuff, right? Why are we learning this stuff if it doesn't really predict anything? So uh, that, my criticisms of e economics aside, my position vis-a-vis -vis, um, universal ba basic income is largely a business um a business source decision, if you will, or a business based, uh, not decision, but prediction. And also my understanding of tech, both come into play. So here's the situation. Well, I'll just give you a very direct example. A good friend of mine who's been an engineer for a well, long since, since he graduated, but he's been working in a particular field of engineering where they do a lot of um, analysis for companies to produce some uh, very detailed reports that they then submit to governments for tax credits and other things like that. Highly detailed work, highly skilled people involved in it. So he has a team of technical writers who uh, put together these do this documentation. We're talking about 200, 300 page reports, very, very specific, very detailed, very technical. And so the last three years with his team, they've been developing an AI based system to write up these reports based on the data submitted to the system by the uh, by scientists and by the engineers running the experiments and doing their work. And he's told me, like I just actually spoke to him last week, he was telling me that his AI now is uh, pretty good, not 100%, but put it in perspective, his highly trained, highly paid technical writers when they submit a report to him, he tells me it's about 75% done, 70, 75% done with the good ones. Meaning there's a lot of editing to be done, changes to be made and so on. So it's a bit of work. But 75% is pretty good, 70, 75%. Well, his AI now is able to generate the same reports with about a 90% accuracy. So the AI is already better than the highly experienced, highly trained technical writers. And uh, the AI is able to generate these reports in about a minute, whereas it takes the technical writers weeks and weeks and weeks to produce one of these documents. So in a short period of time, as the system becomes more and more refined and more advanced, as his AI, his algorithms become better, uh, it's going to replace all these jobs. Uh, just in Canada, it could be 10,000 jobs. I guess in the U.S. would be 10 times that, 100,000 jobs. These are not, you know, low-paying, low-skilled jobs. These are jobs by highly trained people who, uh, who write all this, out all this technical documentation. And this is just the beginning. So we discussed about what's going to happen when all these companies like his, he's a smallish company, are developing all their own custom AIs that are very niche-specific. What's going to happen to uh, all these people who are not going to have work, right? It's uh, it, it's going to come out in waves. We're going to have an AI that does this, AI does that, AI does this. So, for instance, you have an AI out there now that can detect cancer in X-rays at a far better accuracy rate than the average doctor. I think the average cancer specialist doctor is like they're 70, 75 percent accurate in their diagnosis when they look at X-rays. Uh, the AI, an AI that came out, it can do it at like 95%. So the AI is already better. And uh, it's just going to get better and better and better. And you're going to see more and more and more of this, these AIs come around. So what is going to happen when this happens, when this stuff really starts to roll out? Well, a huge amount of jobs are going to disappear. And they're never going to re be replaced because the AI is just going to get more and more sophisticated over time. And in fact, the rate of uh, acceleration in terms of the development of AI is increasing much faster than they originally thought. So this this is a huge wave is about to hit us. Now some people are going, oh my, oh my, we're not gonna, not gonna have work. I'm not gonna work. Well, I was talking to my friend of mine, uh, who has developed the AI, and he is a capitalist to the bone, 
and I am as well. You know, I haven't worked for anybody since I was 18 years old. I've been an entrepreneur my entire adult life. Last job I had working for somebody, I was a bouncer in a nightclub. So, uh, you know, I'm not exactly a communist. I'm not exactly a socialist. I don't, you know, these ideologies don't work because if you don't have production, you don't have motivated people, everybody gets lazy and the cars fall apart on, when you try to drive them on the street. But this all changes with AI and robotics because AI doesn't get lazy. They don't need to be paid. Uh, they're always efficient. They don't make mistakes. So the whole game is about to change. And people have no idea. So the, 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 the baseline that we've been used to up until now in terms of how economies run and how things, uh, things work is all about to change because of the ultra cheap or practically zero cost labor and the diminishing cost of energy with more efficient solar. And point is, the input costs are going to drop like a stone. And that's the nature of technology. That's the whole point of technology. That's why today nobody sews their socks anymore, like my great grandmother did. These days are so cheap. And guess what? With robots and AI, the, plum, the, the price is going to plummet just incredibly. So, how does this relate back to universal basic income? It's a necessity. It's a necessity. Necessity is going to happen. I don't know all the, the, the specific details, but the cost of everything is going to is going to f collapse. Like you know, with AI's building houses and AI's building the roads and AI's uh, manufacturing, you know, doing all this work, the cost of everything is going to plummet. And my friend who has his AI, he believes he's going to make his money in the first several years because he's going to replace all these jobs. But eventually, not eventually, very quickly, people are going to see what he's doing and they're going to come up with their own. And then it's going to drive down the cost. So a report that used to cost $40,000 to generate will cost five bucks because, because the AI will go and it's done, right? And then all the competitors will come in. And if you look at the cost of our TVs, look at, you know, you can buy huge TVs today for a thousand bucks. So 10 years ago, those TVs, well, they didn't exist, but the best of the TVs were $10,000. Like, 10, 15 years ago. Uh, I know, I bought them. So it's, uh, that's just the way of, it goes. So you don't have to be a master of economics to realize that uh, with all these jobs disappearing, in, unless the government wants to set up like a Mad Max road warrior type of situation, which they won't because they don't want revolution, uh, there's just going to be a massive, uh, just gonna, they're just going to deploy robots you know, have robots are going to be farming. Robots are going to be cleaning the streets. Robots are going to be repairing homes. Some top guys out there I read on Bloomberg or something, they're thinking that within 10 years, half of all jobs will disappear. Half. Half. So, you know, it's it's going to happen. But it's going to be um, because of the rise of this, this technology, AI and robotics and so forth, uh, the disparity between wealth the super wealth, the wealthy and, and the poor will, will shrink considerably because the cost of everything is going to shrink like we've never seen before in the history of humanity. And uh, my prediction on that is based on just observation of history. If you look at it today, like I mentioned in a previous vlog, a friend of mine is a bum on welfare. He's got a flat screen panel, 50 inches. He's got high speed internet. He's got unlimited, um, he's got unlimited entertainment. He's got plenty of food. He lives in a comfortable place. He's safe. Uh, and it's, this is just going to accelerate, you know, times 10, if not, you know, not more. I don't know what the exact number is, but you get the idea. So if you look back 120 years ago, a lazy bum like him, a drunk like him, he would have been in the street in uh, shredded clothes and begging for food. Not today. Not today, you know. And Canada is not some, uh, you know, uh, disaster country. We're a very wealthy country. Our debt levels are actually pretty reasonable. Uh, although they should be zero, in my opinion. But nonetheless, all of this is going to, it's a big game changer. I'm not sure what the exact details, what the exact dynamics are going to be, how it's going to exactly play out. But it's inevitable. If you start wiping out uh, all these high paying jobs, it's going to start with low paying jobs. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Have them live on the street? Another thing, with the AI, though, with the robotics, you won't have to because the AI and robotics within 10, 15 years will be able to build houses for a, for a fraction of the cost of today, right? If you think about it.